So my name is Rachana Dahal. I am a singer-songwriter, and uh, I write uh, my emotions. I pin down my feelings, and uh, through my music and lyrics and compo compositions, I um, talk about. I advocate about mental health. Um, yeah, uh, people might uh, think uh, that uh, someone's too intense for talking about uh, these sort of emotions and issues, mm -hmm. but uh, it's not. Uh, we have to be out there, we have to talk out loud, sing out loud. Definitely people come to me, my listeners come to me and they say that I've, uh, and my music, not me necessarily, but my music uh, has helped them a lot. and. Uh, they did not even realize that they should be feeling those things and they did not even realize that music uh, could uh, be an outlet uh, to feel and uh, express those emotions. There's stigma, there's taboo of uh, you know, being afraid of uh, mental health and talking about it. Uh, especially, I think what uh, there should be is uh, it, it starts from home, of course, it starts from school and every school should have a good mental health uh, counsellor where they can go and figure things out mm -hmm. because too many people, they cannot, they don't even know that they're going through it. All of us, we need to unlearn and relearn about these things, um, the teachers they need uh, training, the uh, students, they need counselling and uh, that's the main way to go. Uh, first step is that public awareness. Maybe I'm a little privileged in that point and I, am, uh, I have that mindset that every, every person should, it's not the end of, you know, it's not the end of uh, the world if you are uh, mentally unstable. It's not. Mm -hmm. uh, we should always give chances to, to those people, whether it be professionals or um, teachers or students or musicians or anyone who's going through it. And uh, I personally feel like um, I don't like we, the judgments that there is. It should uh, always be eliminated. And however we can, it starts from ourselves. I think that. Uh, mental health mostly is about self-care. Mm -hmm. It's not about whether you're completely in the dark or completely in the night. Nobody is completely in the light. Like that's a that's a, a misconception of life. Life is all about uh, embracing the both and then navigating because nobody gave us the brochure to life, and we're just navigating it through. Um, but talking and or singing or playing or writing being creative that helps a lot that helped me a lot and I feel like these these very deep um, issues I hope that they get resolved one by one because we have as I'm saying like I am privileged you are privileged but we go one hour from here or half an hour from here we drive go to a drive and then we get to a completely different world where they don't have that capacity or the privilege or the knowledge even to seek or know about all these matters. Yeah. My name is Kamla Podel. I'm a Nepalese woman. I started my life with uh, a great misfortune. My stepfather sold me for some money to the child traffickers and I had to spend about five to six years of my life in the brothel house. Mm -hmm. And uh, eventually when I grew up, I realized this is not a good place to be. So I ran away from the brothel house and uh, started living on my own. I was about 11 years of age by then and uh, I had no memories of my family. So I could not come back to Nepal to my family. I started working in churches, in the roadside eateries mm -hmm. to make uh, life uh, 
possible for me, survival possible for me. All this stress had its effect on my mental health and uh, by the age I was 14 or 15, I had mental health issues. I did not know it's a mental health issue. I used to wonder why this is happening to me, why this is happening to me. Breathing hassles, anxiety, uh, sleeplessness, all these symptoms were there. But at that point of time in Asia, the science, medical science was not that uh, developed to, to find out whether why these symptoms are appearing. Mm -hmm. it, it was like uh, some people said I am lazy, that's why this is happening. Though it was not being lazy, it was an actual medical problem. But uh, it was disregarded because there was not, uh, the science of psychiatry was not that well developed in Nepal at that point of time. Even in Asia it was not that developed. I came back to Nepal when I was about 17 years of age. Mm -hmm. I started working as a tourist guide here but wrangling with my mental health issues all the while. Mm -hmm. One fine day, uh, some, uh, some known people uh, asked me to take a tourist to the Tatopani, carried their bag and their children mm -hmm. with me and uh, they went to Tatopani with me. Police raid happened and they wanted to check the bag I was carrying. That bag had narcotics but police caught me. Not the tourist, because bag was found on me. Oh, yes. okay. So I was sent to uh, 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 prison and uh, without any trial, without anything, because the police said she is a mad woman. Oh. I mean, this is the kind of prejudice and uh, stigma everyone had that police, just because I'm, I had mental health issues, they decided then and there itself that the bag belongs to me. Mm -hmm. And I stayed in prison in Nepal, in Kathmandu for about uh, eight and a half years. I, my mental health issues became more and more uh, pronounced, more anxiety and uh, uncomfortable in talking to new people and all, everything happened. Everyone in the prison used to call me Baula. Baula means person mad, very derogatory term for people having mental health issues. The doctor in the prison could not diagnose it as a problem. They said, maybe I'm deliberately doing it so that I can be released early. Okay. So in the prison, I stayed for about um, uh, eight and a half years. And thereafter, I was released from the prison back into the streets. Mm -hmm. This time, I did not have money or job with me. Mm -hmm. And uh, my mental health was very, very badly devastated. I could not uh, uh, think properly, rationally, and I was... Uh, like a medical zombie. Mm -hmm. People will come and ask me questions, why are you sitting here, why are you sitting here? But I used to think they are all my enemies. Mm -hmm. They don't want to help me. They want to create more complications. Mm -hmm. So I used to look at everyone with suspicion. But uh, eventually one day, uh, when I was about nine months in the street, ten months in the street, uh, one fine day, people from Koshish came. Yes. And uh, as usual, I was very rude to them because I thought they are just there to create problems for me. Mm -hmm. But they were so professionally uh, trained people. Mm -hmm. They handled me very, very comfortably, very, very nicely. Mm -hmm. And they won my trust. Okay. And uh, they said, uh, we will take you uh, to a place where you can stay, you can have food, and it's very, very safe place for women. So uh, I was in the initially reluctant but then I realized I have no other option I have to go with them at least they will give me food mm -hmm. so I uh, reached uh, uh, Koshish center for women and there they said uh, you have shower first and then we give you food mm -hmm. so uh, that's how it started the uh, new journey the uh, organization was very nice and kind and I found home away from home and for the first time in my life I realized that uh, I can have a home. Mm -hmm. Medicines uh, they were giving me, counseling they gave me, mm -hmm. breathing exercises they taught me and all that after about uh, 10 months, 11 months in the center I recovered at the threshold levels mm -hmm. and since I had no family, no place to go to. So, Matrika sir, the CEO, uh, the executive director of the Koshish, mm -hmm. he offered me job at Koshish itself for sensitization and awareness about Koshish to the people. So, I came to uh, uh, a 
position where I could help others the way I was helped. And I like that very much. That I have, God has given me a chance to return back to the society what I received from the society. So, I love my job very much. I feel very blissful when I help other women mm -hmm. because I know how it feels because I was in that state once. Mm -hmm. So, uh, now these days I am working as a program officer, sensitization and awareness. I try to go to the government offices carrying uh, self-advocacy campaigns and uh, I go to uh, people telling them uh, mental health issues are just as normal as other, other diseases. There is no need to, be, to stigmatize it or to uh, get prejudice against it and certainly it is not a witchcraft. But Nepalese society is very orthodox and in the villages, remote areas, still today, Till today, uh, people, uh, the older generations believe that uh, mental health issues are like a witchcraft. Mm -hmm. So, it is very challenging to go and convince them that it is just as normal as cancer and uh, cardiac diseases. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, it is not a big thing, it should not be stigmatized, mm -hmm. it should not be prejudiced against mm -hmm. and uh, people should come out and openly declare. Yes, I have a mental health issue, but I am leading a normal life. Mm -hmm. Hi, my name is uh, Irina Giri and I am, I think, 31 years old, let's say 31. And um, uh, I am an artist. I think since I was, I suppose, 15, 16 years old, I have been struggling with different manifestations of mental illness, whether it's depression or uh, like deep anxiety and to the point of not functioning. Uh, and, it's, and it is ongoing, so that is my link with mental health issues. Because I grew up in a boarding school and that was not very easy for me. So my means of coping with that is to obsessively just hide under academics like study 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 or like overperform and so that i didn't have to address how difficult it was adapting to the hostel life so when i was 15 or 16 years old and this was nearing the slc which is like one of the big exams i really took that very seriously but at the same time my father got sick around that time so that pattern of obsessing over my studies was interrupted by this family emergency and I think that's when that like that's when that delicate shell that I had crafted like kind of cracked open and all the problems started emerging because I could no longer hold on to studying because I had this very intense family uh, situation that I had to be a part of and then I could literally feel my mind being torn into <laughs> these two places um, and then that just cracked me up and I couldn't function anymore in that ho hostel like my mind was constantly in a frenzy I couldn't formulate sentences and but at the same time I felt the pressure to study for my exams but my mind was not working uh, it was so scary to be around people and but then it was equally scary and heavy to be with myself so I think ultimately it was just like extracting myself from the hostel and then having my whole family be with me and then slowly as time passed the because I spent more time with my family the atmosphere softened a little bit and I felt like okay I've come out of it and then I went to Canada and then the first two years were amazing there. But you never know when that thing comes back again. And like I had to make decisions about my studies and at the same time my father got sick again. So again I cracked open and I couldn't function there. And this was in a foreign country and I loved being by myself. But now I was in a foreign country by myself and barely functioning, basically. Um, it was very difficult. 
uh, I don't know how to explain it ap apart from like the physical sensations that I remember, which is like my mind, my brain constantly feeling like it's burning all the time. And again, mentally it was very, very agonizing and I couldn't formulate sentences. And then that started affecting my friendships because I was always this happy, cheery person. And then suddenly I'm like this person who's not functioning but has to mask has to get around because this is a foreign country. Um, no, it's never ending. No, it comes and goes, it comes and goes. It comes in different ways and in different manifestations. So I think as time passes, I've just learned to, through different kinds of support systems, I've learned that this is part of me now and it will come when it wants, whenever things are not right or it might come whenever it wants to come. What has happened in the last year is that I found a new therapist and after talking with her, this possibility of me being neuro neurodivergent has come up. And we even did the test and then it turns out I'm autistic, I'm in the spectrum. After Canada, I had to find a th some kind of mental health support. And then it began with, uh, it began with this therapist who was a specialist in CBT, Cognitive Behavioral Therapy. And it worked up until a certain point, but then after that point, it became a bit rigid for me because it was, there were a lot of worksheets in <laughs> Cognitive Behavioral Therapy. And it works, but sometimes there might be situations where it might not work for you as a person. And then I had to find another therapist. So there were like many, we had to keep looking till we, till, till chance encounters with people and their connections led me to the therapist that I have now and who I'm really happy with. And the same thing with the psychiatrist too. The psychiatrists here were very supportive, but I don't know, I think there was this frustration in our family that I was just not getting better, <laughs> which is also this thing that we need to talk about, like is there, there is no getting better, it's just like this up and down and you see how you can embrace that. So I think one advice is, um, it might be very exhausting, but I think it is important to keep seeking support uh, with the hope that you'll find the right kind of support at some point of time. Uh, there might be moments where you go to a therapist and you might for sure, you might have a very disappointing experience with that therapist or mental health professional. But the good thing is, right now in Kathmandu, there are many different pockets of mental health professionals and collectives, uh, and it's much more diverse now. So if you keep looking, rather than quitting, saying, oh, like, this is something that no one else can understand. Basically, I'm saying if you don't, if you go to a therapist and the therapist doesn't work out for you, that's okay, that's very natural. And it's very natural to keep looking for new therapists till you find the right combination. And medication is okay. You need to keep trying them out till you find the right combination as well, depending on your situation. It is a, it is a very stressful situation, yes, but I think it will be easier on the person suffering if the family members around them don't panic so much, treat it as a way, part of their life. And it's not an... It's not something that can be fixed. And also, you know, there's this structure in Nepali society where if you're a kid, you're a kid, and the therapist and the parents can easily become a team. And that can be very toxic for the kid because if the parent and the therapist are a team in a sense that they discuss the kid, and then sometimes the parent can tell, oh, your therapist told me that you need to be stronger. If the kid hears that, that that union between the adults can be very toxic to the kid. Uh, so that has affected me many times, like where there, that trust has been broken. Because it is kind of a judgment, right? When you tell the parent of the kid that you're treating that the kid needs to be stronger now, it is a judgment. And that can easily seep into my relationship with my parent in the way they perceive me. Often, people who are suffering from mental illness are cornered off as people who need to be fixed. But 
we need to start looking at more towards what needs to change out there in the society and be a bit more kinder to ourselves because whatever we're responding is towards what's out there. So I think if we start thinking about what we need to change out there rather than saying, oh, I need to fix myself, what, how I'm responding is not right, uh, then like maybe a new window will open because then it's not our fault. It's not, we're not the ones who need to be fixed. Uh, so we need to maybe start breaking that a little. Like we're all in the same racket with different <laughs> complications. So, yeah.